Hi, Bob here. June 15th, 2014. We're going to do a demo on try to help everybody understand dielectrics. I know we hear the word all the time, but just exactly what are they? I've got a little demonstration set up here with a Windhurst. And what I have here right in front of you, I've got three, four different, four different materials. I've got aluminum, which is a metal conductor. I got a thin piece of plastic. I got a piece of paper, heavy paper, and I got a, a fairly thick piece of nylon. And what I'm going to do with this is right here, you can see there's an electrode here, an electrode here, and over here we have a gas lamp, gas light. And uh, I'm going to spin the, can you, see, you can see the arc between the, between the two electrodes and when it arcs the light, you can see the lamp light up. I'm pretty sure you can see that. We'll just keep running it here. Oh yeah. Yes. All right, now, to understand dielectrics, now the, they use air, it's called a constant in dielectrics. And it, remember there's air between these two electrodes. Now, Wimhurst is putting out 70,000 volts, so it has more than enough pressure to break down the air and gap across the two electrodes. And when that happens, the current flows through the gas lamp and charges, lights, illuminates it. Now, you can see it didn't, I'm not even spinning the Wimhurst very hard. So now we're going to try, or now we're going to use the different pieces. First we're going to put in the metal one, which just slides right in between the gap there with the two electrodes. And you can see that there's it sparks at the same rate. The metal being a conductor offers very little or no resistance to the spark. Now we'll try the paper. Now paper is subject to humidity and we're about 55%, so it's pretty dry. You see, it blocks it. Now you'll see a slight glow. That's what I love about the paper. There's just enough ionization, enough, enough going through that and there's enough charge just to make the lamp glow. But it, now you can see and as I bring the paper in, it jumps around it, and then when I fully close it, now if, it, if the charge gets high enough, it'll go right through the paper. Now it is going through the paper. Not going around it, it's going through it. But you can see there you can see there's a, some light being produced in the lamp even when it's not arcing. Because there is a flow of ions. All right, now this is plastic, a thin piece of plastic, you can see. I'll bring it in. At first it starts going around it, and then I keep it putting in deeper, covering the electrodes greater. You get just a slight charge. That could be coming from the negative. I got the negative cell. Might be. But it blocks the spark. Now I'll try the, the the heavy piece of nylon, and I'll slide that in, and there you have it. Very once in a while, the air is dry enough, it'll spark right around it, <clears throat> like that. It's going around it, not through it, and that is the dielectric. Dielectric do not carry. <clears throat> current. It stops it. 
and that is basically what a dielectric is is and that's what it's for we put a conductor in between no problem it sparks very easily goes right moves right along so there you have it I get a basic understanding of dielectrics it doesn't mean that the plastic are it doesn't mean that the plastics aren't being affected by the spark or by the electric field. They are, but they won't carry any current. They just stops the flow. Dead in our tracks. And uh, I'm just going to slide this out of the way and show you that Mr. Wimhurst is working just fine. And then we're running it through the capacitors or the lighting jars. And uh, I will explain in greater detail about dielectrics in the description. Okay then, that's your basic dielectric demonstration. Talk to you later, bye.